I'm Les O'Rear of the Illinois Labor History Society. When we discuss the labor movement and the uh, problems of unions, industrial relations, all these subjects, we seldom appreciate the depth of struggle that went into the creation of this modern labor movement. In 1936, what was called the CIO, that was then known as the Committee on Industrial Organization, later changed its name to the Congress of Industrial Organizations. This committee was set up under the leadership of John L. Lewis to organize the mass producing industries, the industrial unions. And one of the keystones of that drive was in the steel industry. All throughout 36, thousands thousands of workers in the basic steel industry flocked to the union banner. Uh, so much so that by January of 37, the biggest of the steel companies, that's U.S. Steel, uh, agreed to recognize the union. But the remainder of the industry refused to go on, and their managers decided to uh, try to destroy the union before it could get a start. This forced the hand of the steel workers. Accordingly, a strike was called in May of 1937. One of the classic cases where this crunch came, where the right of the union to free speech and demonstrate uh, was aborted by public officials, occurred in 1937 in what we call the Memorial Day Massacre at Republic Steel in South Chicago. There's a union headquarters out there now, almost at the very site where those people died memorializing their names and the men and women who were injured there too. This is local 1033 of the United Steel Workers of America. On May 26th and again on May 28th, the union tried to set up uh, picket lines at the plant gate. Uh, the police, however, chased them away, beat them up and drove them off, allowing only just token picketing. The union's dis response was to call for a great mass demonstration to establish the right to have the significant picket line, but the Chicago police refused to permit this to happen, and a very bloody massacre occurred. One of the people who was there is Sam Evett, now District Director of uh, District 31 of the United Steel Workers of America. Sam is here and is going to narrate a film that you're about to see. This is the film that was taken by uh, the newsreel cameras that were established, set up at that time, and we're going to present to you an uncut version. I was there that day because of my duties as an organizer for the Steel Workers Organizing Committee and my uh, relationship as assistant to Nick Pontecchio, the field director, who was uh, the principal speaker at the Sam's Place preliminary to the march across the field by the pickets. What you're now seeing is the Chicago Uniformed Police preparing to meet and confront the strikers who will be marching across the field from Sam's place where they are holding a mass meeting. This is evidently the beginnings of the first group of strikers in the long line of strikers marching across the field beginning to approach where the police have drawn themselves up in a line formation to block their right to picket in front of the 118th and Burley Avenue Millgate entrance to Republic Steel. I'm sure you observed a number of the police paddy wagons drawn up there. The police were evidently anticipating they were going to be hauling a lot of people away from this area. This is the scene showing the strikers having arrived to confront the police and demand their right to peacefully picket in front of the mill gate. arguing with Captains Mooney and Captain Kilroy, explaining to him their right to peacefully picket.
front of the mill gate. You can see some of the strikers vigorously arguing with the police. This scene takes place momentarily after a lens change showing the police firing their guns, clubbing the pickets, shooting tear gas. There was a tear gas bomb streaming through the air. If you look closely, you can see the police with their guns in their hand, some of them firing into the backs of the pickets as they struggle to run away from the police. Seven of the ten men who were killed on that day were shot in the back, the other three were shot in the side as they sought to evade the police and to run backwards in the direction from which they had come. There's Lupe Marshall, a social worker from Hall House, being prodded by a police billy club. Workers are down on the field, having been shot. There were 30 others that were injured by bullet wounds that day, as well as approximately 60 more who were clubbed and beaten unmercifully. They're now loading them in the paddy wagon. Many of them with blood streaming from their heads. Here's a wounded member of the Union who is being thrown into the police wagon. Mrs. Marshall, by the way, stated that there were 16 in the paddy wagon that hauled her to the police station, some of them dying, wounded, piled on top of each other. Some of them were not delivered to the police hospital, Bridewell Hospital, well, some three hours after the incident took place. There were many people not in police uniform. We have some suspicion as to their reason for being present. This is Al Causey, who was shot and who was allowed to bleed to death. At least one policeman tried to comfort him. picket being taken away by a group of Union pickets who had their own car and who had driven across the field to help carry off some of the injured back to Sam's place where a first aid station had been established. This was brought about by an incident that had happened similarly on Friday evening the 28th of May where the police had clubbed a number of the pickets. A view of the uh, Millgate entrance at the 118th and Burley, showing evidently some police, some scabs, and company personnel in the background. <laughs> 